We're sitting here on this final table with Mario and he's living his own dream. For me, you are much more than just a poker player. You are a former football player, you are influencer, and you even started the company with fellas, with fellas of yours, yeah? Can you tell us a bit more about Fly First for Less? I started that uh, company about two years ago, um, right before shutdown. It was actually pretty bad timing because yeah. <laughs> no one booked a flight after that. Um, but it's basically um, we book uh, uh, business and first class tickets for discount. Um, we use the, uh, the system with miles to get the flights cheaper and then we sell the ticket to a client and it usually saves 20 to 60 percent of the ticket. Um, and yeah, we, we have a VIP service for the clients. They just tell us where they want to fly it and then we find them the best option. It sounds for me absolutely up to date, you know, what's going on these days and what the things are really interested in. And I really want to start from the beginning because I think it influenced your life and everything we, we saw now during all these performances here in the poker circuit. What about the football? Probably it comes pretty early to your life and even before the school you started training? Yeah, football was always the biggest part of my life. I, I don't know exactly when I started, but probably somewhere around four or five. Um, and it's always been, always been the main priority. It was always, um, my parents were very supportive. I, like, in, in soccer you go through like stages, you know, it's, you, you start to see, okay, you're maybe talented and then you go to a bigger club and then in Austria you have academies where you play on national level. Um, and then at some point you go to, to, a, to a professional club, then I went to the second team. And so it was very step by step and for me it was always, okay, this is what I, what I want to do and this is where, what is like the path for me. And uh, yeah, I did that till uh, I turned 20 or 21, yeah. That was my main, my main thing. And why, of course, probably it's a bit sad question, you know, mm -hmm. but why it stopped? What's the reason? I understand that you're transforming for the youth to the men. Yeah. You know, what's, what's the reasons, the main ones? Maybe injuries? Uh, no, I, I wasn't injured at all. Um, for me, it was mostly the question. Um, I reached a level, I played Austrian Bundesliga. And uh, for me, I felt, okay, I was pretty unhappy with like, uh, like this professional life. And then for me was the question, okay, would it change if I play higher? Maybe, maybe not. But I knew like how it is now, how it is in the Bundesliga. I just don't enjoy it. I don't like to be in this professional athlete bubble where like only thing matters is if you perform on Saturday and nothing else really. Um, and then was the question if I want to do that for the next uh, 15 years or more and uh, yeah, I just wasn't sure um, and then I thought, okay, maybe I, uh, I see, I, if I miss it, then I, I can always go back and, uh, to soccer and then I decide, okay, maybe I take a break and see if I like something different or if I don't miss it at all or something else makes me happier. And da -da, we have at least three more things you're uh, building and working really fine. But we're going to talk about that later on. I'm still curious about the football, you know. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Okay, you decided to leave it behind you for this uh, period of the time. But I strongly believe it gave something to you. I'm talking about maybe discipline, maybe, you know, some preparations. Because I see on the poker tables, yeah. actually we played even in some of the events, I see how you're focused uh, comparing to the others and maybe it's the way to success. Can you share some ideas about that, things? Yeah, that has always been a strength of mine that I, I really like the, the grind, basically. Just working uh, and like getting better at specific things, filtering out what is um, what is key to be to perform better and like working on that and that was actually the part that I still to this day miss the most because I really enjoyed that like working on as a professional athlete because you have so much like it's unlimited room to to improve and um, yeah that was definitely the thing that uh, that was my one of my big strengths as an athlete and I think that uh, translates well into now poker yeah and you just uh, mentioned the thing I wanted to, to talk uh, a, a little bit later, but I really interested. Uh, you talked about transformation, you know. What was your transformation from, like, let's say, f former footballer yeah. to the poker player? What was the first steps and uh, what the problems you, you felt from the, from the start? Mm -hmm. I started playing poker way early, actually. I started when I was 
13, 14 years old. I played online on full tilt back in the days. Um, and I always played mid to high stakes, uh, but as a, like I would say, as an ambitious hobby. Um, I was decent, but I was not good. I made some money and I just always liked playing poker. And for me, there was also not the, the question, I stopped playing soccer for poker, that was not the case. It was just, okay, I don't want to play soccer and I don't know what else I do. And um, I, I traveled a lot and like since poker always been a, a passion, I uh, combined that with playing some live tournaments, playing a little bit more online. Um, so I slowly transitioned that I had something where, okay, I really like doing that. Um, and then it got slowly more more intense and I, I structured, I worked more professional on it and that's how it translated from soccer into to poker. And now it makes much more sense for me, you know, you had like backdoor plan from early 14th years when you became like adult 18 years yeah. old you know when of course already told the small secret for us yeah. that uh, you were under the age for playing maybe it changed a little bit i'm talking that you started to play on your own account and now you can go to the live satellites yeah. and then you can make it. it maybe it was the reason the poker was a small reason to get like a bit rid of the football is it possible um no i was not as good in poker oh, okay. Um, I was decent. Uh, actually, my grandma was pretty decent because I played on her account. Um, grandma. Uh, grandma. Okay. Um, but yeah, when I turned 18 and I, I got my own accounts, um, uh, yeah, but it was not the, a big reason because it was just not not a path in poker that I, I would have wanted to take or that was visible for me. It was not much of an influence. Got it. And I'm surprised you, you, you're sharing more and more uh, pretty like interesting stuff. You talked about your grandmother. Mm -hmm. What about the parents? Okay, they were supporting as you told us about the, yeah. so uh, about the football, but what about the poker? Uh, now I guess they should be like that, but mm -hmm. what about the early days, you know, having in mind that you were in grandma's influence, being underage and like being 18, 20? What was the like path from the parents to understand the game of poker in Austria these yeah. days? It was, at first I didn't tell, like, it didn't, I just played video games and I played online poker. Um, and I played on Full Tilt where they had these free rolls where you can win some money. Um, and then you win like $2 or $5 and then you can grind it up on uh, like 1 cent, 2 cent cash games and then tournaments. Um, and the first time I told them that I'm playing for real money because I could never deposit one I, I had multiple times where I ran it up to like a thousand and then lost it all and then the first time uh, I told my my parents when I had like 3.5k on it, and I told my mom I have that account. I don't know what to do with it. Um, uh, maybe we can withdraw it somehow. It was back on the full tilt. Um, so yeah, and my parents, my, my mom works in a bank. She doesn't want it, so <laughs> we made the account under my uh, grandma's name, and they verified it, and they withdrew the money, and so I. I played there on full tilt uh, for quite a while under under her account. Yeah. How old was you in that time when you won like first 3.5k? Um, I was 13, I think 13. Yeah. It was 2009 or 2010, somewhere around there. I remember that because um, they had the the full tilt uh, challenge, uh, the bankroll challenge from Chris Ferguson, <laughs> where uh, they had the full tilt academy where they had like training videos and stuff, and I just watched everything like also there was poker tube back then where they had like WSOP replays and I watched really every poker video I could find um, and I tried to follow that and I tr tried to take the lessons and then I remember it was two weeks before Black Friday um, where I won two tournaments and it was total for I don't know 25k um, and I won that uh, I withdrew most of it but I still had like 10k on it and then was Black Friday, they shut it down. But Full Tilt opened a month later for like two or three weeks again. Yeah. And in that time, uh, the rest got uh, withdrawn. So that was pretty lucky before they shut down everything for the, for the rest of the time. But yeah, that was, that was the early days. We talked about your early ventures now, but what about the journeys? Uh, we had just pandemics and I know how love you traveling. What was the pandemic time for you? It was a pretty clean cut. Like I was... Uh, traveling for the first three months I was just in Australia and uh, New Zealand and then I flew back to Europe to Finland for a week and then was hard lockdown it was like March April 
um, and it felt really good because it slowed everything down basically like every distraction that I had or like anything else I could do just slow down and you just stay home um, with my girlfriend it was nice weather at the time and I just really enjoyed yeah just being home and not doing anything but play poker and that was a uh, um, yeah March to in 20 and that was basically the start where um, everything else I, I did slowed down a lot um, and I only focused on poker and that was and I really really enjoyed that part and that's how my life is still now like only focused on poker um, but it took that event for me to to really uh, just really focus on one thing and that made a big difference in the last one and a half years and uh, how long it took you for uh, missing the traveling I guess it's a big part mm -hmm. as I open your let's say Instagram account and I see so many beautiful moments it should be some moment then you missed that thing no I always feel it feels fantastic when I get to to, to travel a lot but it also always feels uh, really good being at home and I uh, I enjoyed that part more I got to see more of Austria because it's really beautiful at home but we never really travel within the country Makes sense, yeah. Um, so yeah just uh, just cut down that part a little bit and uh, yeah, I didn't miss it that much because it's still really nice at home and I, I loved it and I want to ask one more thing about tra traveling mm -hmm. you know I always see the beautiful moments that are saved on your mm -hmm. uh, your or your girlfriend Instagram mm -hmm. accounts how are you traveling? I'm talking about, uh, are you traveling with the team? They are making the videos, etc. Are you traveling only sometimes with the girlfriend or maybe alone? What's your favorite things and how you usually do it? You should travel just with my girlfriend. It depends sometimes when it's poker trips or like this year we went to Costa Rica for a month and we went to Vegas with the poker crew or like my, my, poker, my poker friends. Um, so it really varies, but it's my, I'm always with my girlfriend. Um, and yeah sometimes even bigger group yeah the only thing i didn't i should probably in the most of the interviews i should start from the beginning about this thing mr scoop champion 2021 and i'm talking not about the one of the events i'm talking about the main event this is probably the biggest your victory so far in the poker and uh, how of course you you already explained us that you were able to focus so much you worked for it for like one year be, being in one point of all of them how was the feeling to win maybe some secret stories behind it you know maybe you were the, the friends and then you realized how was it's not a one day event you know so it should be something really interesting about this moment I never felt so and there's actually a video of me winning winning it we posted that on uh, on, on YouTube um. oh! Oh! Because it was such a big accomplishment that I didn't have in poker yet, uh, where I was just like, holy shit. And there was this moment because I, in the final hand, I, I shoved the river with two pair and he tanks and I know if he, if he calls, then, then, it, uh, then I'm good and he tanks for like a minute and I have like this 60 seconds where I'm just sweating, where I just realized, holy shit, if he calls, then I won the, the scoop main and we didn't deal. It was a huge heads up for 300k. Um, and then he called and it was just, it was really, really emotional there. It was uh, a big, uh, big milestone in my career for sure. Um, and then it was funny because there was the stream house at the same time with like from the poker code guys, like an hour away. And then we uh, we had that part where we celebrated and we drove there and then we had a whole party in like for like the whole night. That was that was really fun. Okay, the celebration, everything, the stories. What about? What about the couple days or the week afterwards, you know? Usually that kind of big victories uh, changes the poker players' careers, you know? Yeah. Some of them, they start to play more live, but you've already done it before. Maybe you climb up through the stakes, but the stakes are pretty high even before. Mm -hmm. What was the, like, changes in life? Maybe you saved some money or bought something, you know? How it influenced your uh, father life? It was also in, in lockdown time, so it didn't, you know, so it didn't ch uh, change uh, right away anything um, I remember it was the final table was on Wednesday and then I played the Sunday session and I won a WCP bracelet a WCP ring uh, on Sunday for I think 150 so that was 
that was crazy and the, also the the next six months were pretty insane afterwards it was just uh yeah financially a big difference um but otherwise i i did not move ups in stakes because i always try to make that depending on my skill level rather than the bankroll i think that is really important but yeah i didn't uh, didn't uh, make big changes afterwards yeah got it beautiful to hear these things I saw here Roland Rokita, a yeah. very good fellow of yours. Yeah. And uh, can you tell us more about you, about yourself as a, as a part of this community? Yeah. And of course about the greenhouse. Yeah, the greenhouse. Uh, that was actually the, the I, I, I told you that it was March, April where the lockdown happened, uh, where we f like basically poker was the only priority back then. Uh, so then Scoop came around the first time. Um, and I talked with Fedor, okay, because I always like, uh, we always like to grind together because um, he doesn't want to play or like, he doesn't play alone because he, he not, doesn't like it. Um, and then we said, okay, let's get a house for a scoop. Uh, so we did that and I was like, hey, I have a few friends uh, who you would really like because he didn't know them, they were soccer friends basically of mine. Uh, I would just bring them because it will be a fun week. So we rented a big house. Uh, I invited all the all the guys. So we were like 10, 10 guys plus a few girlfriends. It was just an amazing week. We didn't play much poker um, besides Sunday sessions, maybe. Um, and that was also fu like fun because uh, Fedor played 10k, 25k, and next to him sat sat the other guys like Hagi or Gogush, and they play 10 dollar hyper on Chichi and. Uh, oh. Twenty dollar on uh, Winner Max or something, but it was just a really fun time and really great experience. Um, and that was basically the first time I was like, okay, this this was just really nice. You, we just really liked uh, the time. We we didn't do much poker, as I said, but uh, it was just just really nice to have that as a group. Um, and then a few weeks later, I talked with Johannes, who the the Poker Code CEO who is a good friend of mine and we were like hey let's let's maybe do that again in some way or shape or form and have poker code as the like brand uh, brand uh, around it and uh, just get all the guys uh, in the house and see where this can go and it was at that time nobody was good if i think back of me i was pretty w weak rag to please say uh, yeah i was not that if seeing myself one and a half years later um, and the other guys were uh, maybe at a 1k 2k bankroll were playing low stakes um, but nobody was like really good back then so yeah it was pretty quick like a week later we started it the grinders and we did it for two months um, and it was just uh, it was just super fun like uh, we worked uh, with Feder, with Matthias with Simon um, and we learned a lot um, but what we mostly learn is like the, the foundation of like how to work how to approach the game that you long term get better and that was the most part that we uh, could take away and that was for sure the two months that were like laying the foundation for the next year to have like a really quick growth as a player and that was that was the, the start like I, I was almost dreaming, you know, about my own dreams about this one. And you just mentioned uh, Fedor Holtz, yeah, mm -hmm. which is like living legend. Yeah. N no matter the fact that he's extremely young for being yeah. as uh, mentioned as a legend. Yeah. Can you tell us more about how you met? What's how, how what was his influence to you? I, I got it about yeah. your friends, but yeah. personally to you, and even probably before this one. I think it was 2013 in summer the first this is funny because the first poker player that i met i played for like four or five years but the first poker player i met was uh hannes speiser is a, a good friend of mine who is from the same town but he moved to vienna he's like probably 10 years older than me and through coincidence we uh he got to know that i play poker even though i was only like at that time 15 or 16 uh, and then on Sunday I played uh, at his apartment in Vienna a few times um, and it was right at that time where Feder moved from uh, Germany to Vienna and Hannes was also a friend of, of Feder so we started playing Sundays together in 2013 where Feder was 
had not much of a bankroll yet. He was playing uh, mid stakes, um, and I remember it was we met like a month or two before. Uh, David, another friend, then won the double Cup main event and failed at a big piece, and it was basically the start of uh, the hyper growth. But it was 2013 in the summer. Um, yeah, that's how how we met. It was a uh, uh, crazy how long that ago. It's like the eight, or eight years ago. Yeah, and we are now, as you told, eight years later, yeah. and we see we always see you when you are playing or Matthias playing this beautiful orange yeah. jacket all the time. And could you tell us more about the poker code, about the their community? I know that they're pretty close, yeah. and the, can you tell us more? I know these things, but our listeners, they they for sure need to hear that from your lips. Yeah, yeah. In general, poker code is a coaching uh, 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 site where. Ma founded with Matthias and Feder. Matthias is one of the very best players uh, in the world. He's really driven, like maybe the hardest worker in poker that I know. Um, and yeah, it was it's basically a really big uh, community. Uh, they they uh, uh, have a Slack channel. They post uh, like uh, training videos and uh, like how to improve as a player. And that is basically the foundation. Um, so it developed from there. It was uh, I'm personally not involved. I just like wearing the the hoodie because I like I like Matthias, I like Feder, and I really uh, support their uh, their company and their community. And a week ago, it was the first live poker event in Bratislava, and it was just so nice because it was for two years. And obviously, being in the Grindhouse, which is a poker called uh, 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 thing and like everybody knows and like everybody follows the path the success over the year uh, so a lot of people like a couple hundred people just know know me pretty well and I've not met them yet um, and it was really nice just meeting all of them in in uh, Bratislava last week and uh, it's just nice to see how much passion there is for the game how much uh, you mean to someone that you haven't met ever before uh, so that was really nice um, and I really enjoy uh, yeah, just just really enjoy that uh, being a part of that. Great. One more thing, and you talked about the passions. Yeah, uh, we met actually, I guess, three or four years ago when the yeah. first time you came here to Merit. Yeah. What's your passion? You have so many options to go all over the other circuits, yeah. and you, from time to time, like all always, I can see you here in the bigger events of Merit. What's the reason why you're coming here? And I, I see you, you're even coming here not alone. You're coming yeah, here with yeah. your girlfriend all the time I see and here. I always bring more people. It's, yeah. For me, it's very close to home because it's a one a direct flight from there. That is fantastic. So I'm here in like two hours or three hours. Um, and it's just the games are cr crazy good. Like in Europe, the, you won't find another 10K or 25K or 5K main event that is uh, that good as here. Or like valuable um, and it's just the whole surrounding like uh, being able to being basically in a resort a inclusive resort my girlfriend can enjoy holiday while I play um, it's just it feels really feels like a holiday and then you play some poker basically it doesn't feel like going to Vegas and stay there for three weeks because you have to grind it just feels like going yeah going on holiday and play poker and that's I, I love that so Every year, at least May and September, I try, and then it's been a two years break now since the last uh, uh, tournament series uh, happened. So I'm really glad it's back. Um, but it's yeah, like I think every six weeks is a series, and I always try to to make it. It's fantastic. And what are your plans for the near future? Okay, we have yeah. still eight days of the festival yeah. coming here, but what afterwards? So I fly to Istanbul on the 27th, then I stay there three days uh, and then we fly directly to Vegas and uh, Vegas is for, yeah, we plan 55 days till the 25th of November, wow. so a pretty long grind, um, maybe I take some breaks in between, um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to the WCP. It's been a while and uh, I, yeah, it's just uh, getting to the felt, everything uh, I and we learned in the last two years uh, just feels good and getting volume in, uh, i really looking forward to that. It sounds really, really insane. And for this kind of the marathon, it's, it's not like sprint, it's 55 yeah. days you told it. Yeah. 
what are preparations, you know, what are the things to not get burned yeah. being all the time involved basically every day with like really short breaks. Yeah. Maybe you, you, you read, maybe prime things from the past helps you. Yeah. What's, the, what's the key for being like all in shape through such a long period? It's, it's a mix. Like I, f I think what is really important is to also not judge yourself if you don't perform that well. Um, being okay with, like maybe if you don't feel it well, okay, maybe you're not playing your very best, but then you just select a tournament where it doesn't really matter on day one if you play game A or game B, because the money is made in the end game and there you have to be sharp. So being on kind of a relaxed state, uh, not super high focus because that burns you out really quick. Um, and just like playing solid, playing relaxed uh, for a long time and then being able to switch when it really matters and not, like then being really uh, on point like in high EV situations like in final tables or deep runs. Um, I think that is a really good mix for staying long and staying uh, efficient in, in, uh, in Vegas. You know, listen like that, you. It sounds like you're not representing the poker code, but you can be the the, the big part of it because it sounds really, really good. And these chips are not for the any reason, you know. Yeah. Tomorrow we have the first day of the main event of Millions North and Cyprus, and we are on the final table. So maybe yeah. these chips will come to you, and yeah. after a couple of days you following the plan you told to me and we will meet here on this final table as a winner yeah. and it would be really really insane story yeah. so cheers it was pleasure i wish you best of luck and see you in the probably couple of days